Hallelujah, hallelujah. We want to welcome one another to the house of the Lord. We may take our seats. I want to greet you all. I want to welcome you all to the house of the Lord on a wonderful Sunday morning. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. We thank God so much for all of us, our leaders, our elders, our deacons. Let's just welcome one another in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We want to thank God so much for the presence of our sharing elders. We love you. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Elder Spiroro is the E and L. E and L Piroro. We thank you, our sharing elders. We want to welcome our lovely pastors, um, Pastor Vela. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, the evangelist is in the house. Uh, he's going to come later on. I am not, I'm not an evangelist. I hear people promoting me. Hey. <laughs> evangelists. Yeah, I'm evangelists. <laughs> but I can evangelize. Uh, there's power in the name of. See now. You see now. <laughs> we want to greet the evangelists in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, we are in a wonderful season. If there is a season which we must uh, appreciate, if there is a season which we must thank God for, it is this season. The season of working home talents. The season of working home talents. The season is about me this time around. It's about me, my family, my children, me, my personal development. Hallelujah. Home talents, oh yeah. Uh, I, 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 I hope people are waking. Because when it comes to home talents, people work quietly. Quietly. I, we, we, we don't really know if something is happening behind the scenes. Um, but we believe you are doing something. Uh, we are praying that uh, those who haven't got anything yet to do, any business idea, we are praying that God drops a business idea in your heart. We are praying that um, uh, God gives you something. God opens that door. God gives you a breakthrough. Amen. We are also praying, even on Apostle Abject, it keeps recurring, to say let's pray for kingdom wealth creation. That, that, that those that are in business, let the business flourish. So it is our prayer that those that are already in businesses, let it flourish. Let it not just be a merry-go-round, kabanga business, kabanga not, but let it flourish. Amen. Let it flourish. Now, we have a wonderful book here written by our father, uh, Matarenda, Talents, Matarenda, Talents, Matarenda. You know, Talents is our thing. It is our thing. Our father says here, Talents is a school. Talents is a school given to the believers or saints of Saoga forward in faith ministries. It is a school that is specifically given to us, the believers of forward in faith. This is why you see other, other people, they try, they try to imitate talents. They can't because it is our thing. It is something that was given to our father for us, the children of forward in faith. Amen. Now he says, in this school, in this school, just imagine at a school, different classes, different grades. Now, even in the same way as we are working home talents, we are all in different classes. We are all in different groups. We are all in different categories. There are those who are already entrepreneurs, like our father here says, it is a school, in this school, we are taught to use our hands to become entrepreneurs. Some are already entrepreneurs. Some even, even got an idea of what am I going to do? What am I supposed to do? Some they didn't, they don't even understand what it means, talents. What is it? We are all different and we are all at different stages. Amen. But our father here, he says, 
the outcome goal, the ultimate goal is for us to become entrepreneurs. To become entrepreneurs. He says, number two, in order to make ends meet, and last time when I was here, I talked a little bit about how ends don't meet, you know, in our lives. You try to join these two ends. They can't meet. They keep going apart. They keep separating. But our father says when we wake talents, when we wake home talents, it's for us in order to make ends meet. Imagine the ends of a rope, the ends of a cord when they meet. It means uh, continuity. There is continuous supply in your house. Hmm? It means stability. But if ends are not meeting, ends are running away from each other. What do we mean when ends are not meeting? It means my salary for last fortnight does not meet the salary. For, <laughs> it's not allowed. <laughs> they can't mix. Huh? There is always lack. Things are not telling. Things are not joining up. But ends must meet. Ends must meet. When we work talents, when God blesses us, ends must meet. They must not run away from each other. Uh, to some people, it's a must. They have to eat it all. They have to finish all the cash. They have to finish it like antibiotics. You know, I'm a nurse. When you go to the doctors, they say, finish the course. Even if you feel better, just to finish the now we also have Christians who want to finish the, the cash. To finish it all, it must not meet with the other one that is coming. But our father, through the teaching of talents, he wants us to be what? He wants ends to meet. It, the ultimate goal is to become entrepreneurs is to, in order for ends to meet. Number three, it, he says, oh, self-reliant. We must be self Reliant, not to rely on my shift, not you know, to be angry when the manager changes my shift or cancel that shift because that's where I am relying on. But our father says when we work talents, we become self reliant, self propagating, self sufficient. So that's the other purpose in the ultimate goal for talents for us to become self reliant because. One day, your back will break and you wake up, you can't go to that shift. One day, you know, I always give an example. Many, 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 years, some years ago, there were some, some people in our nation that came and they, they were settled in our nation. And one day they woke up, they were chased from our nations. You know, you remember, those who remember, they were chased but they actually had PR. <laughs> Some of them, they were actually Zimbabwean citizens. But when things shifted, they were chased from the farms by our own people. So you never know. One day, even if you have a PR in here, <laughs> tables may turn. They say, go back to your nation. Go back to your country. These things are not predictable. So we are saying you must become self-reliant, self-propagating. Amen. Point number four. The ultimate goal is to eradicate poverty. Ah, this one is a big one. To eradicate poverty. To destroy it completely. To eradicate poverty. Let's go to the word of God. Acts chapter 16 verse 14. Do I have a reader in the house? I only have limited time here. Um, let's go straight to the book of Acts chapter 16. Verse 14. Amen. So this uh, portion of scripture, it is uh, when Paul was on his missionary journey with his colleagues and they arrived at this place. Uh, if we read verse th verses prior, they tell us that where prayer was customarily made in that place, uh, in the city of Tiatra, in the place of Tiatra. What I like most is from where we are reading. Uh, when Paul meets this woman, 
uh, named Lydia. Three things are noted. Let's take note of these three things. Uh, the Bible talks about her name. Her name. This woman's name is actually mentioned. It's different from in other portions of scripture where we see Paul saying, greet Aquila, greet uh, Priscilla for me, greet this one, and many, many, uh, and others. No, no, no. But in this case, her name is actually mentioned. You know, it is an honor to have your name mentioned, especially in the Bible. It means there is something. When you see your name being mentioned, ah, it, 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 it means there is something outstanding. Amen. Now some of us, our names, eh? you hear someone's name mentioned, you know there's trouble. Every time your name is mentioned, it's associated with the gossip, with the trouble somewhere, somewhere. Ma, tell me, who? Ah, I knew, I, don't even tell me, I knew, I knew he was there. Trouble. Her name was mentioned. What about yours? What is your name known for? Does even Google know you? <laughs> if you ask, if you type your name on Google, what does Google say? Google will say, did you mean, do, do you mean, <laughs> it, it's not known. You haven't done nothing. <laughs> This woman, her name was mentioned. It is an honor to have your name mentioned in the word of God. Amen. It is only when you have substance, when you have done something. Here in this nation, your name, is it known? Let alone in your house, what are you known for? When the children come, what are they saying? That Mother's Day gift, is it worthy what you are doing? What have you done for them to know you in that rural areas where you are coming from? What are you known for? They will say, ah, that one, she's stingy. That one, she's stingy. Another time when I, we went home to my rural area, and there's this elderly man who came. Uh, you know, when they, sometimes when they just see a car, they know that he, <laughs> they, they, the children are here. So, you know, sometimes the whole clan will just come and greet. You know, so this elderly man came. And uh, my, mother, my mother warned me, says, ah, this one, he talks too much. Do you have a dollar? Just give him a dollar. <laughs> because your name will go everywhere. They'll say, ah. And she was saying, you know, your, your little sister, my mother was telling me, your, li your little sister, ah, she, she turned her name, she says, ah, kaya kano nyima. <laughs> your name must be known. What have you done for, for them to, to say something good about you? Me, when I go to their place, where I'm married, it's our place now, ha, ah, sometimes I laugh, sometimes I say, God, <laughs> They say Murungawi. <laughs> Murung is here. I don't know how to interpret this one. You know, the, the boss is here. You know, it's those little things. It's not like I give them a lot of things. No, no, no. It's those little things. The fact that we are here, they expect us to go a little, an extra mile. Amen. So what are you known for? Are they saying the boss is here? When you get there, now when you say the boss is here now, they have already created an atmosphere for themselves. They say, no, 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 Murungu cannot go on the stove. Mm, Murungu, there's a chutzi here. Murungu. You know, they... they <laughs> <laughs> Her name was mentioned to say Lydia. We are learning here that a name is very important. And you create a name for yourself. A few weeks ago, we were being taught about, uh, we were being warned or encouraged by the elders, Tafuma. And he was saying, Tafuma Towers is coming right here in, in, in Canada. 
The name is going. So we are saying during home talents, in these home talents, what are you doing? What name are you creating for your name? What are they going to say? So when we are reading, her name was mentioned specifically. Uh, her calling, this is number two, her calling was also mentioned. The Bible says she was a seller of paper. Her calling was mentioned. And one thing about her, even though she was a businessman, a businesswoman, even though she had a call to mind, even though she had a business to look after, yet she was a worshiper. So you cannot separate talents and worship, talents and prayer. They work hand in hand. Hallelujah. So I don't know which warm talents we are working when we are not praying. We are not coming for our Monday prayer. We are not coming for our Tuesday prayer. We are not coming for our Friday prayer. Which talents are we working? <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, uh, evangelist was saying last, is it last week or last of last week, business is very serious. In the world, they don't just do business anyhow. Some people, they sacrifice. It takes someone's head for someone to do business. Someone will sleep with their child for, to run their business so that their business prospers. We see even other people, they burn incense. What do you call it? They burn things in those shops. You get into a shop, you can, you can smell that they were burning something here. So what sort of your business you are doing without prayer, without... <laughs> huh? Our father says, big God, big money. So we cannot separate the two. This woman had a business, yet she was a worshiper. She did not uh, let the other one uh, down. She was a seller of purple. Not a wearer of purple. You know how sometimes other, us women, we, we just say, ah, I love, I like pink. I like purple. To wear it, I like green. I can see green is dominating today. Is it present worship? I like green. But this one, she was a seller of purple. She was not a wearer of purple. And this purple is not like a, as purple as in clothes. No. She was selling dye, purple dye. And purple is associated with the royalty. Purple is associated with richness. Purple is associated with, you know, good things. It's a royal color. You know, in, in the tabernacle of worship, they would put those colors, blue, purple, scarlet. It's a royal color. It's God's color. It's for rich people. So in other words, this woman was filthy rich. She was a seller of purple. So she was se selling that dye. And the way that dye was, 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 was manufactured, the way, it was, the way it was coming to be, it was not like an easy way. It would come from uh, 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 seashells. It would come, which means it was a hard work. Just imagine going to the to the beach and start to gather all those seashells and you know it was hard work so to me she was hard working this is why our father saying says talents here he says talents in this school they are taught how to use their hands in other words talents is not a man that you just just come by <laughs> to be honest even if you find a lump sum of money, maybe $100, $200. You, you, you don't want to take it because it's not yours. You ask, well, someone has dropped the money here. Someone has dropped, because you, you have not worked for it. So money must not just come by anyhow. It has to be worked for. This is why our father says, we need to use our hands to work talents. I don't know what you are doing with your hands. 
<laughs> this year of working home talents. So this woman was a seller of purple, a kingdom color, kingdom authority. She was right there in the kingdom of God. Amen. So she was a rich woman who was not only minding her business, but she also had to pray. She also did not forget or forsake the going to the house of the Lord. Amen. Number three, her place was mentioned, Tyatra, where she was coming from. Tyatra. You know, this is the same Tyatra which is mentioned in the book of uh, Revelations among the seven churches uh, where letters were written. Tyatra was one of those. So her city was mentioned, Tyatra. Now, if we say Alberta, this is Alberta, right? Alberta. <laughs> Do we have anyone who is outstanding in Alberta? Can we say Elder Pris Priscilla of Alberta, a seller of peanuts? I don't know what you are doing. Can we come up with, with this something? Huh? Is your name known for something in this city? <laughs> Elder Linda Piroro, a seller of wigs in Alberta. They must, I must be known. All we know is the, this, this food, the one I was saying, ah, this one is, looks like Hungry Jake's where we are coming from. This food, food outlet, what do you call it? Yeah, Tim Horton. <laughs> Tim Horton is known. Where we are coming from, cause is known. Asda is known. Okay is known. But what are we known for? <laughs> what are we known for? Which means we still have a work to do. We still have a long, long way to go. Even in your little locality, what are you known for? Hallelujah. Home talents, oh yeah. I have to be known for something. I have to be, to be, to be known for doing something. My business must be prospering. Amen and amen. You know, our children must not start from where we started from. We started from a painful angle, a painful knot. The Bible says in the, books, in the book of Proverbs that a rich man huh, leaves an inheritance for his children's children. I like the definition of a rich man by, by Proverbs. Proverbs describes perfectly. Huh? He gives us the perfect definition of a rich man. One who leaves an inheritance for his children's children. Is my time up? How many minutes more? Three minutes. For my children's children. Now, my, as for myself, when my father died, <laughs> Just say the girls, all girls who were given one thing. I can't even remember what it is. That's the inheritance. That I don't even remember what it was and the way it is. Maybe some of you, they left shops for you. Maybe your father left a supermarket for you, a mall, a business for you. Maybe you are starting it a better not. But as for me, majority of us, Tell you what our, our forefathers left for us. Blood pressure, sugar, diabetes. That's what we inherited. But we must, we must now cut that, that umbilical cord so that our children will start from a better knot, will start from somewhere. You go to the doctors, you, they ask you, uh, is there any illness in your... They started to, why are they not digging about shops to say, are you related to okay that I know? You say, yes, yes, that's us. Why leaving blood pressure and, you know, why did you take it in the first place? So when we talk about home talents, 
We are saying you must leave an inheritance for your children's children. Someone is saying, I have a house. But you have five children. And the Bible says you have to leave an inheritance for your children's children. Your, this is your grandchildren. So if you have five children, now you have, your children will have their children. Are they going to inherit something from you? This is what we are talking about. One house, but you have three children. It's not even enough. Because their children must also inherit. They must partake from that. The one you are saying, I have a house, it's not even yours. It's on mortgage. Isn't it? If you want to know that it's not your house, just skip a payment or two. They will come for after you. They will come. It means it's not even your house. It's not even your house. They will come after you. They will be by your neck there. This is why you are doing shift after shift. Because if you skip the mortgage, they will take their house, which you claim to be your house. It's not your house. Hallelujah. That nursing profession you are proud of, you are not the nurse. No. Skip that registration. They will scratch you off the register. You are not the nurse. They will take their registration. They will take their pin. Then you know that you are not the nurse. So in other words, you don't have anything. Look at yourself. Just take a introspect. We remove the nursing because it's not yours. We remove the mortgage because it's not your house. Who, who are you? <laughs> what are you remaining with? Your car is on credit. It's on finance right now. Isn't it? That house is on mortgage. Let alone your wife. You haven't even paid yet. You haven't finished. Back home, they are waiting. They say, ah. That, that, that wife is not even yours. So when we say home talents, we are saying a person must have money. You know, home talents, they must make you angry. You, you must be angry about your situation. You, you must feel angry. You must be provoked. It's not your house. How many times do we lie one to another? You say, I, I'm in my house. It's not your house. Those in Zimbabwe, they are better. When they have their houses that they have built cash, you know, they are free to write, beware of dogs. Because it's his house. Because it's his house. They write, Wuku pano, mazai pano. We sell eggs here in my house. Now you, you can't do that. You can't. The one you are renting, you can't even nail on the wall. They say, no, no, don't put nails on my walls. You are controlled. <laughs> I want someone to become angry. Home talents must make you angry. A person must have a house. A person must have an address. Hallelujah. So it's according to your grade, your class. To some, they are in, still in that grade where they really want to, <laughs> to make their kitchen upgraded. You know, when, when you visit some people or when you have visitors, you set your table and you realize that ah, there, is, <laughs> there is glasses here. One is taller than the other. Not because it's a style. No, because the other one died when mama was doing dishes at the sink. The other one died when, when your child was doing dishes. 
and you shouted it. Why did you break my glasses? So to some is as little as buying glasses. Having a full set of pots, a full set of teaspoons. Teaspoon. I want someone to open their eyes. So that we, we, we don't go about saying, ah, church is just eating our money's Home talents don't work. No, they work. I said to my province, home talents is the only time where me as a pastor am allowed to go in your house right down from the pantry to the kitchen to the bedroom. I want to see where my elder is sleeping. I want to see. I want to see your bed sheets. <laughs> we are coming. <laughs> We don't want people who say home talents don't. We want to see where you are sleeping. That bed. Is it the bed for my elder? When he gets sick, can he say, Pastor, come and pray for me? Or it can be like that one who, when they fell sick, the husband, the wife fell sick. Was was it husband, wife? They fell sick. They were upstairs. And the pastor came. And the wife said, Pastor, don't worry. And she went upstairs to drag the husband the stairs. Because things were not okay up there. So when we talk of home talents, we are talking about you and me. Where you are coming from. You and me. Right there where you are sleeping. Right there. Home talents must show themselves there because it's about upgrading myself. I want to sleep where it's nice. I want to sleep where it's comfortable. Why are you breaking your back going to that shift yet you're sleeping on that bed which is... (laughs) Hallelujah. I can see the MC is rising up. Uh, We are going to continue. But what we are saying here is if you don't have an idea... Seek help. Don't miss opportunity. We are in the time of home talents. Don't lose opportunity. Don't let this opportunity pass by. Amen. Don't be like Judas Iscariot. Judas Iscariot lost opportunity. He had all the opportunity to to to, to repent. When Jesus says, one of you is going to betray me, he remained, you see, he knew. He left, he lost that opportunity. Jesus even went on to say, the one who is going to deep with me, he remained quiet. Yet he knew. He lost the opportunity to repent. So we don't want to lose opportunity. We are in the right time, time of home talents. So if you don't have an idea, you don't know what's going on, you don't know where to start, maybe you are in the business, but it's just going merry go round. It's not flourishing. Seek help. We are here for you. We may, t- we may, t- know, we may not know the, the, <laughs> the vocabulary that you use, but we have something for you. We have something for you. Our father, when he went to America, God says, I will, I will, the anointing, I will give you my anointing. It's in the anointing. Hallelujah. To be continued. God bless you.